like all the other teams. if there wasn't a challenge to it, if there wasn't a goal to be accomplished. If it was easy, we'd call it shopping. There's a Scottish tradition called the McNair. What we call the east side of the band. It comes out of a literary work, a fictional character named John McNair. Yeah, these are the ones I told you I've seen. He sends letters to landowners and challenges them to catch him poaching on their land. If they catch him, he gives money to their favorite charity, and if they don't catch him, he pays for the game. When we examine this in the spirit of the sportsman, there's really nothing we like better than a challenge. It's a little bit after five o'clock and we're gonna climb up this hill and, and um, look down into some canyons. It's amazing how the deer can hide out here, but when they come out to feed, they just start popping out. And it is so great to be here and, and doing this. I've been looking forward to this all year long. So in the morning, we'll probably follow that fence line out, Gary. Yeah. And we'll go around that, that knob and we'll park facing into west with the sun at our back yeah. and we'll get out and depending on if we've elected to go in with darkness or a little bit of light and we'll check those those flats out and if there's nothing out there that's going to sound the alarm or push the deer then we'll move into Rattlesnake Canyon and we'll actually hunt uphill and up the canyon spotting and stalking. Uh -huh. yeah. You're in eastern Washington we're 100 miles from Spokane, 100 miles from Walla Walla. We're out in the heart of wheat country, on the edge of the Palouse, a place that Indians called uh, part of the Sharana Trail. This ground here is just really deceptive because you can stand here and look out there and think there's not a single deer here. But there's all these little rolls and all these little folds and not a tree for miles. There could be 20 deer in one little coulee. All it takes is for us to just look into the right coulee. And I think there's a lot of animals here. And this is the first evening. We've got a few days to look. And I think we're going to find what we're looking for. It's going to be real cold tonight. And we'll probably have deer moving around a little bit longer in the morning because of it. Wait for the temperature to come up, so I expect we'll, we'll get a look at a lot of animals in the morning. It's that time, but it's been warm today, yeah. and so they might, they're feeding like fiends. Two fingers, 
between the sun and the horizon. It's at 20 minutes left. That's the Cherokee in me. Usually there's about 60 or 70 deer out on that flat out there that we're looking at right now. We're gonna go down this draw. Rattlesnake Canyon. Okay. And it runs all the way into the Palouse River. So we've got about four miles of canyon there to mm -hmm. work. Oh man, this sounds like fun. This McNabb is in the back of my mind while we're hunting. I'm looking for a mule deer. Here they have to have a three-point rack. This McNab is in the back of my mind while we're hunting. I'm looking for a mule deer, and here they have to have a three-point rack. That's where we saw those toes last night. Yeah. yeah. Coyote. There he is, just right where I said he'd be. Oh, yeah, right. We won't shoot coyotes today. Because it'll disrupt our deer hunt. Yeah. First shot goes off on a Friday out of a coyote. You're pretty much giving everybody a heads up yeah. that we're coming. First thing, we spot a coyote. And my first inclination is, hey, let's take this coyote. But I, I look to Jeff because this is his hunt. He knows where we're going. And there's a chance we could alert the, the deer in this canyon. Sun's coming up. We've had the wind at our back quite a few times. Right now, I got the wind on the side of my face. Every one of these little coolies could hold deer. And, uh, but they're going to be on top first. I don't think it's early. It's just, it's the weather patterns. This is the third day in a row we've had frost, but every day, every night the moon's got fuller. Yeah. So they could be laid down or they're not. I bet, I bet they're up on top. I think they are. We can look into these little side canyons where the deer will be later in the day, but we're not going to find them until we look out into the open. And once we started gaining some elevation, we found a group of deer, I could see them by their ears in the, uh, in the wheat where they were up on a plateau catching the morning sun. There's deer over there. Way over there. That way. A thousand yards down. That's a buck. Yeah, you're right, they're up on top. I was looking on the next knoll. Yeah. <laughs> that ridge. He looked to be a, a three-point antlers, um, not as wide as his ears. An, an interesting deer to look at, one we were going to consider. It wasn't as cold as I thought it would be this morning, and it was cold, but uh, now we're at 825, and it looks like the deer are laying down already. So we're going to have to really be good. We're going to have to look for ears and antlers. Go straight up to where that V is mm -hmm. in the sun. Notice how the buck's not with them. We're kind of pinned down by a doe right now. She's watching us from almost a mile away. That buck, he's just a little guy. That three by four we missed yesterday was about 22 inches heavy. And that's a good spot for here. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. I'm not, those deer know we're here. I know, but there might be something over there. I'm watching. The air is so calm. It's cold. These are the kind of days where you talk out loud and the deer are going to hear you a long way away. 
their ears are probably three times better than ours. Two, two hunters. Two hunters on that hill. Two, okay, that's Saunders. That one, the far hill. Mm-hmm. Those deer dropped into that deep canyon and then they came up the other side. They're just still moving. But the buck is not with him anymore. He peeled off. He, he either didn't want to keep up or he's not able to keep up. So this is the same buck that was with those five does. Did those toes come out of Gary when they came out of that draw? That, the, the, the closer one. Closer rather than yeah. farther? Yeah. yeah. Okay, we'll keep an eye on that buck because he'll lay down if he's hurt. We can take a good look at him. Okay. Feels right. I don't want to get up too high, but he's he's going to be at the bottom. There. You can see the balloons. I mean, since we're this far. Yeah. Whether to stay low or stay high, I want to drop into this because it's just a nasty. And I, but I want to look in it, so I think we'll double back. Yeah, well, we could do that. This canyon is not right for the way they've been bedding down the last two days because the sun's coming right at up. And now they've been putting their back to it. There's a lot of old shrubs and stuff right in there, and then over on this side, it's mainly rock. This is a great canyon right here. It's got game trails on both sides of it. There's a little bit of feed in it, but principally it's a good spot for a buck to come up and lay it in under a rock. And so what I want to do is just, while we have the wind with us, just peek over these little rocky outcroppings and look down into the shadows. A buck's gonna want to be like two thirds of the way up on the hill and uh, with a good view and catching the wind coming up out of the valley. So I'll be looking in those spots first. When we're done with this, if we're done now, that's fine. There's a bowl right over the top. Okay. There were does in there last year. Hey, this can get out of sight. So we stopped on this ridge top and we're looking down into this basin and there's nothing there, but we know something could happen pretty quick. I, I said, hey, let's shed a layer. I'm whispering, hey, let's shed a layer. And so I take off my pack and just as I take off my pack, I spot a deer coming out of the basin. Oh, there's a buck right there. What do you think? And the camera's on the ground, and we've got to make this happen quick. Jeff says that's a shooter. I got him. He's a shooter. Okay. It's that buck we've been trailing. Let's take it. Okay. And and we're we're into action, and we got a deer on the. Um, top of the ridge, just going out of sight. Jeff says, shoot it, take that buck. All right, I'm on him. Looks like I'm down. He's not gonna get out. Nice shot. All right, <laughs> good. Good going. Yeah. Well, we'll let him simmer down a little bit. Two hundred. Yeah. Right. I got two hundred two. That's what I said. That's why I said. Yeah. Yep. It looked like it looked two hundred to me. Mm -hmm. We work our way over to the buck, and I look across the canyon, back up to the north, and there's two white spots moving up a trail. It's a pretty big buck in the front, and a really nice one behind him, and. Uh, these are uh, a couple of four points. One a um, 180 class four yep. point, 
and just a real good example of what this country can produce. And we walked down the hill to collect our buck. And in my mind, I'm thinking, it's still morning. I've got a fly rod in the truck and I've got a shotgun. This is the day we go for the McNabb. Huh. So this is the same buck that was with those five does. And I'm certain it is. He's same distance between the ears and um, same height. I was looking at him and, and thinking three point and thought um, maybe just a little heavier than, than he is, but um, not certainly not the big older deer that, uh, that would have been quite a bit bigger than the does. He, he was visibly bigger than the does in the body, a little bit blockier. And he peeled away from those does and it could have been because he had twisted his leg or had an injury of some sort that uh, was keeping him, holding him back. It also could be that he was feeling some pressure and wanted to be apart from the other deer. So that's, that's really common. It's gonna be great um, eating and uh, a, a great memory from Washington State. Is there a truck waiting for us down there? Yeah, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous rainbow. Gorgeous, wild rainbow. Great. They blew anything by. In. It doesn't look like much, but you know a, a crick like this can hold some big fish and uh, and numbers of them. You just got to find the deeper holes and and the little cut banks and the places where um, a fish can make a living. And I bet we can find a place like that on here. We've accomplished phase one of the McNab, and so now we're going to go out and see if we can get a trout. Stage two. This is a Schroeder's parachute hopper, and. Uh, I noticed that while we were deer hunting today that the, um, the hoppers were out. This is one of those rare October days when there's still um, hoppers on the grass. And so uh, I know if there's hoppers on the grass, there's hoppers on the water. Oh, got one. And there is a trout. Take it on a dry fly on an eastern Washington stream, native rainbow. And we're going to get him back in the water really quick. Nice little trout. Thank you, buddy. And off you go. McNabb stage two has been accomplished. Now we're going to see if we can catch another trout. Because <laughs> we just got in here. Let's see if we can get a bigger one. Oh yes, oh yes, very nice, very nice, boy that's a hard fighting trout, oh yeah, this one, that is a gorgeous, gorgeous rainbow, gorgeous wild rainbow, worthy of, worthy of the McNabb <laughs> experience right here. What a gorgeous, gorgeous trout. And there you go. Thanks for playing. 66.67% of the McNabb has been accomplished. Nice line of tippy rocks. Now we've got one thing left to do today if All we right. can. Okay, and that's that's get, cool. get a bird. This is going to be the hardest part of, of getting this McNabb thing accomplished is, is finding some birds and and uh, hitting one. Jeff's in the office on the phone. He's trying to make connections, get people on the phone, talk to people that have seen birds in the last couple of days, seen pheasants or Hungarian partridge or something. And meanwhile, sun's going down and we're losing a little bit of light. It's four o'clock right now. We'll see. We're going to try. We're going to try and get this done. You got permission to go on to Dick Coon's place, try to shoot some quail. 
Bro, right here. Bro, right here. Good boy. Hold up. Good boy. Says we're on, we're doing it now. I've been waiting a week. Mm. See that white spot in yeah. red? Yeah. Let's just see if we can see it. Pull in here. Here, here, here. I didn't know I signed on to dress you. Phase three with them. Some whole bunch of quail, two two bunches to, that joined up. They all hooked around that point out there. Yeah, I think we go right there. I got the first one. We're probably gonna need the dog on this one. McNabb, stage three, very nearly complete. <laughs> Get him out, Will. Get him out. We did it! We did it! <laughs> we did it! One bird, one, two trout, and a buck. That is a day. That is a day. That's what they call the McNabb. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Is this your buddy here behind us? You can see a bunch of our real estate from here on the other side of the Badlands. Mm -hmm. Oh wow! There's a bunch of cows over there. What do you think? Turn around now, or?